Hey, thanks for checking out my first instructional video on how to hack your house. If your house already has pre-existing Cat5e cable uh, ran throughout it for your service provider for your phone, then uh, this video will totally help you out. Additionally, it's catered towards Google Fiber residents that have gigabit speeds uh, to their residents. And if that's the case, then this video is definitely going to help you out by taking full advantage of the uh, bandwidth that you have available to you. So. I talk enough for two people and I apologize so let's just jump right to it. The first photo is uh, things that you're going to need prior to the installation, your little shopping list. I purchased all of these from uh, Lowe's. Uh, so uh, Ethernet crimper kit, inline Ethernet connectors, uh, you're going to use those so that you can extend the length of your pre-existing Cat5e cable to your uh, Ethernet switch, wire strippers, RJ45 connectors, which are Ethernet connectors. You're going to need some Ethernet wall jacks. Uh, I have also a staple gun uh, so that everything looks a little bit more prettier and fancy. Uh, flathead Phillips screwdriver. Of course, you're going to need some Cat 5E cable. Uh, don't waste your money on a Cat 6 since your house is already with a 5E. Uh, using the expensive Cat 6 is just going to uh, make you spend more money because you're not going to take full advantage of the Cat 6 potential which is for speeds over a gig and also it has less interference but with the gig speed that you have uh, you're going to be just fine not spending the extra money for the Cat 6 unless you actually plumb, plumbed your entire house which is what we're avoiding uh, with new cable then don't buy that. Also there's a 9 volt battery and a multimeter. Also needed is an Ethernet switch. This is so that you can actually connect numerous devices, which would be more computers. And I actually have two of them, one in the basement for the first floor and one in the attic for my second floor. I added these photos for people with a two-story home. Uh, I had to add a junction box and a light switch and, of course, a light to my attic so that the installation would be a little bit easier so I wasn't doing it in the dark. So here's my Southwestern Bell box on the outside of my house. Uh, I took a photo of it to bring up a really good point about the replacement of your phone jacks. Also, it's a great idea to know where it's located so that when you crawl up into the attic, you know where the cables may be coming out of. So here I have two lines. One line stays up into the attic for the second floor, and the second line actually goes all the way down to my basement for my first floor, which is really awesome. Now, if you replace all of your phone jacks with Ethernet jacks, you're not going to have a phone line in your home. Phones are obsolete, everyone's on cell phones, but security companies like ADT and Brinks that require having a phone line in your home. So, you could buy one of these dual data and Ethernet uh, wall jacks to circumvent that issue with your security uh, company. Cool, let's begin. Here is your phone jack in one of your bedrooms. Behind your phone jack, you'll see two Ethernet cables connected to it. One of them you're going to use for your Ethernet jack. The second one, you're going to use electric tape and just tie off that line because you're no longer going to use it. Unless this is where you're going to put one of your dual data and Ethernet plates, then you'll be using that for your phone line. Uh, for just a regular Ethernet jack, you're going to tie off one of the lines because you're not going to use it. Uh, the reason why there's two lines, if you're curious, is because with a phone line, you can hop the cables, and that's what they did. They tied into a phone jack, and they just hopped the line. So the end of the line will probably be like a back bedroom. Uh, there'll only be one line going to it because that's the end of the line. Now, you cannot do that with Internet cable. If you have... Uh, ISPs going to it. Uh, it's I'm not going to explain it, but you can't just tie into it like they do a phone line because uh, it sends and receives traffic, and then the device isn't going to know who to send traffic to, either to the computer or to your ISP. It's going to confuse it, and it's not going to work. So you have to run individual lines. So the other line, uh, you're just going to cut it and not even use it. Now you're going to learn from my mistake. Uh, take a nine volt battery and connect it to two wires down in the bedroom. Then go up into the attic and use a multimeter and find the two lines coming out of that room and find which one of those lines have 9 volts going to it. If it has 9 volts, that's the line you're going to use for your Ethernet jack. 
the other line you're just going to use electric tape and tie it off and you're not even going to use it once you find the line that you're going to be using for that room go ahead and crimp and put an RJ45 connector on it and this is where you're going to utilize your inline Ethernet connector so that you can add line to it in this case I added line to go to my switch box now I'm not a professional installer so what I did is I added electric tape to the inline Ethernet connector uh, whenever you crimp the cable it is waterproof but for my own peace of mind I don't want to crawl back up into the attic if there is a continuity issue with the line due to corrosion or um, water damage from condensation so I, I opted to add the electric tape to ensure that the uh, signal stays as strong as, as possible without the uh, corrosive uh, nature of being in an attic here's the back of a finished Ethernet jack one cord ran to it the other is uh, tied off with electric tape and this is what it looks like when it's finished